Today, we're gonna paint terrain. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here. Next, level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days here in the Beats Lab of California in the Hollywood Hills. We're gonna be hitting you up with another painting tutorial. Today, we are gonna be focusing down on an assembly line technique to getting terrain out the door. As usual, we're gonna break the tutorial up until I kind of simplify it and then the next level painting process, but we're doing it all in one video. I'm not gonna slow roll you on this one. If you got a bunch of your buddies together, you could bang out a whole tournament's worth of terrain with these simple techniques in your backyard, in your own beats laboratory, like right now. Super easy. Obviously, I'm hot off the heels of my Colorado vacation. I took all of 4th of July week off, chilled in the mountains of Colorado, got back to nature, climbed up a mountain, found a whole other group of monks, got some new techniques that I brought down to you guys. Having said that, I want to do a quick roll call. Paul, Doug, Frank, The Collector, Gene, Javier, mm, came in clutch, my man, Randy, Marius, Andrew, Ferry, Christopher, Sean, Andrew, Joshua, Vito, Trent, Hans, Steven, Fear and Rage, Sean, Terry, Nicholas, and Brian. Thank you guys for becoming my most recent patrons. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's my personal crowdfunding page. It's how I keep the lights on. It's how I keep doing what I do. We have goals. We have benchmarks. Uh, we have exclusive and early access with no commercials. You get everything before you see here on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube. It is awesome. And once we reach a certain goal, I'll be able to go part-time on the commissions and full-time on the videos. We'll even be able to take requests from the audience. Let me shout out to longwar.net. It is the fastest growing library in video content today related to Warhammer 40K and tabletop gaming. Let's do this thing. First off, get your glove game on lock. Yo, I get these on Amazon on subscription. Yo, I buy these little face masks from Home Depot. They're fucking amazing. And also speaking of Home Depot, the world's cheapest spray paint. Mm. So here we go. Not very often seen. I'll be stepping out of my beats lab. I'm showing you some of my shaking a can technique. I like to shake it every way, up and down, flip it upside down. You know, I'm talking like back and forth. Um, like every little way you can think of. Holding it upside down is an ancient Chinese technique. And also I got another technique where I swirl the ball around like this inside of there to coat the, the inner rim of the can. Like I've been working with rattle can for a long time. These are just all the techniques for shaking the can that I like to use to make sure I get all that pigment and paint and, and enamel all mixed up together. And we're just gonna go outside and we're just gonna knock it out. You know, just go on thick, go on strong. You know, not like the little bursts you normally do on your little miniatures. Just hold down that trigger and go. Get it done. That's kind of the trick when you're working with terrain. You got to go quick. You got to make it happen. You got to come up with techniques to eliminate the headache of dealing with large flat surfaces. One of the major problems with terrain is a pretty low detail. Most terrain sets are, especially plastic ones, are a little bit less extreme on details than like resin bases are. It's uh, probably a manufacturing situation where, you know, you're putting out these large flat surfaces, but also you don't want the terrain to completely detract from the models on the terrain. You want them to augment it. And so I find that the best terrain is very subtle. And now we're going to switch uh, gears here. We're going to grab our world famous army painter, shadow gray color. And with your know, rattle can 101 right here, we're going to just kind of, kind of blend it in. We're going to hit the flatter and broader areas. Uh, you know, turn it into this shadow gray. Uh, and we're gonna try to leave some of the, the black intact. You know, we're gonna try to create a little bit of a transition using our spray paint versus our airbrush. Now the first stage here, uh, by the time we're done rattle canning, you could have laid out like a, you know, a tournament's worth of terrain out here with a couple of guys. And you can use this technique to rapid fire, get all your terrain to this rattle can, you know, completed stage. If you are in a, in a pinch, you don't even have to go beyond this. like. What we're doing here outside, you can just like say, fuck it, all my terrain, this is what it looks like. And your terrain would look better than most people's unpainted terrain in their basement still. This is, you know, an ancient technique, uh, you know, that 
it's been around since spray spray paint's been around so that's real easy you can see here it's it's not shitty <laughs> you got a little bit of a transition a little bit of a fade there and let's say you were going to lean on this technique like this is what you were going to do for all your terrain right and get it done real quick real simple go back to the black hand after you get all this nice flat broad surfaces done and just reestablish with the black spray paint some of those shades some of those dark areas along the ridge of the big uh hill in the middle you see i'm just creating that border adding the black back in creating an exciting transition i mean literally that quick this is some shit that you know i you could do with the airbrush too if you wanted to but you can do it with spray paint man it's just a back and forth technique i mean this whole process didn't take much longer than i'm showing you here Especially out in the sun, the dry times are pretty quick because I'm. I, it's not very humid out where I live. So same deal. Let's go back to the shadow gray, and let's just wipe out the straight edges against the um, the cardboard there, and just create that obvious, you know, nice ring, that lighter gray. And there it is, man. It's a fucking nice piece. Literally, you could just lay everything out, like I said, do it to this caliber, put it on a table, and a story. But it's next level painting. So we're gonna grab our gloss coat. We're gonna gloss all that shit. Don't worry, I'm not gonna waste time showing you. And we're gonna go to our Vallejo Dark Model Wash. And you see, we have a nice shiny gloss piece now. We're gonna actually run that gloss, excuse me, we're gonna actually run that hardcore dark Vallejo black wash for vehicles. We're gonna run it through our airbrush. We're gonna thin it out a little bit and we're gonna turn the PSI down so it doesn't just blow the wash out. And we're gonna basically wash this entire terrain piece. Now these terrain pieces are actually being designed to match the bases we just did for the dwarves. They're the exact same colors we used in the dwarves. Literally the exact same colors. So even though this hill doesn't quite match their runic mountain base in structure, the colors will match. Absolutely 100% color match. So we're gonna just nice even strokes, coat this motherfucker down, hit it with the black wash, Hit every little surface. Don't overthink it. Get your angles right too, because the airbrush doesn't want to be pointing straight down. It wants to be level. So I'm gonna, sh you're gonna be seeing some kind of weird angles here on um, on this tutorial because I got, I got to film it, but I also got to hold the airbrush right. So there's a little bit of movie magic happening here, where I'm, I'm showing you a little bit of this wash being laid down, and in between some of these scenes, I've already, I've held it the correct angle, and laid it down and, and reinforced it. So. That's, you know, one of the differences between these studio tutorials and my live Twitch stream that I've been doing every Tuesday and Saturday. So if you want to see, you know, how I paint without any movie magic, definitely check me out over there. And it's pretty much done. Now we're going to set it down, let it dry. It's very, very dark, as you can see. It is not even close to the original color we just did. And now we're going to add a little bit more dark wash in the airbrush and we're going to rebuild it in some areas it's a little blotchy i want it to be a little bit more even so real light i'm using a little bit of airbrush thinner in there even to help it dry faster while i'm cutting it and i'm gonna let that dry now this is the ancient chinese technique manoth white base from p3 formula we're gonna dry brush this all up on this giant hill we're gonna grab a big flat brush not a huge brush that we don't have control it's still got fine bristles and we're just gonna subtly start dry brushing the Menoth White base all up over this. And the reason I like the Menoth White, the bone color, is because it's a much more natural highlight to like a rock face than going white would be. It looks a lot more realistic. You will be super happy if you if you change over. If you're someone who uses white to highlight, you know, dark black and, and blue rocks, switch to a bone color, you will thank me within five seconds of dry brushing. It looks so much more natural. And you can see, we're getting some real good detail here. And if, like I said, if you had a crew of guys and you were, and you had all your terrain laid out like this, one guy dry brushing while the other guys do the rest of this, I mean, dog, you this is this is good to go. GG. Whole terrain whole terrain set for a tournament could be done this way, real easy. You know, and we're just, and, but obviously next level painting, we're, we're gonna try to take it one step further. So now we're just building up that men off white base highlight around the, the sloping hill section down there along the perimeter of the piece. You know, just make sure to get your nice even strokes and then just bang it out. Bang it out, you know, all directions. Hit it up. And we're getting obviously a nice product. You guys have seen me do things like this before. Like I said, definitely check out the last video we did on painting the runic mountainscape bases. 
same exact process, but being applied to terrain. So this way you can have your nice new shiny models match your nice new shiny table. Huge. Literally makes me happy every time. Same deal, holding it, and that's what I'm talking about. We're getting into some weird angles so I can continue to dry brush this and film it. And there it is, looking pretty fresh. Like I said, you can pretty much let that ride. But we're going to take it up one more notch. We're going to grab the Men Off White highlight, and we're going to focus down on just the ridges. We're not going to re dry brush the entire piece. We're just going to focus on those ridges and kind of blend it back in with dry brush technique, of course. We're not going to do any real blending. <laughs> this is uh, this is terrain, son. And you're going to get a nice, nice highlight, a nice, real poppy edge. It's kind of like edge highlighting for dry brushing. And there it is, looking fresh. And nice piece right there. Literally, there it is. Anyone would be proud of this terrain piece. Whole table, you know, literally an entire room of terrain painted this well. And you can see every little angle very well highlighted. The wash did its job. The transitions did their jobs. The shadow gray is interacting very subtle. So it's not just pure black and gray. There's a little bit of blue in there. Very natural rockscape. Very happy with this. Now, obviously, we can go one step further. If you guys recall in those runic mountain bases, we use a little bit of brown in there. Now, the problem is, is that that was basically dirt and rocks. And we have little rocks and a lot of dirt here. So I don't want to sit here and go crazy. You know, so this is the technique I developed for this. Let's get that Calvary Brown in the airbrush. And let's just water it down using the Gangster Gumbo techniques. You guys will see me do in many videos. And we're going to just start attacking the broad, flat surfaces of this terrain piece with very subtle Calvary Brown application. Obviously, we're using our airbrush right now. I'm sorry you can't see it. It's just can't capture everything when I'm a one-man operation. And there it is, new angle. Looking good, flat surfaces, Calvary Brown being reinforced, just subtle. You want it to be really watery because you don't want it to completely wipe out everything. You want it to sort of be a ghost tint um, where the colors beneath it and the highlights beneath it are still there. Now, yet again, you could do this technique right here with no further moves whatsoever, no, no extra dry brushing. And you have even a more realistic piece of terrain and more interesting. And that's like I said, one more step tacked on to the, to the overall process to get in that next level technique. Now, like I said, um, this is a 100% color match to the dwarf army we just did with those Runix Mountain bases. Like I said, it's not 100% terrain match, but that's fine. You can't always do that. But as long as the colors match your army, you're going to be very happy. Now, can you guys guess what I'm going to do next? Like I said, you can let this ride right here and you can be super happy. I mean, and take a look at this. This is not a bad piece of terrain. This is a, this is better than 99% of terrain out there. You know, obviously, I had an advantage because this terrain was already made for me. I didn't have to, like, make it out of foam or anything. It's a nice, you know, ejected, molded piece of plastic. But here's the next step. Orange brown from Vallejo. We're going to dry brush this orange brown all up on this Calvary brown. And that Calvary brown is a very ready brown. So this orange brown just highlights it so well. Come on a little aggressive at first, a little streaky, a little bit wetter of a dry brush, you know. And then just start focusing down, bringing the heat, coming super gangster, all the directions, you know, super force. But like when you start app applying it, you know, you're talking about more of like a light pressure, less dry. And then you're going to start moving more to more aggressive, more pressure, more dry. And this is going to give you a really nice finish. It's going to reestablish the highlight. It's going to have the appearance of a dusty dirt plane stripping away as the rocks appear. And like I said, these are exactly the same colors we use on the dwarves. And there it is. It's a very nice piece. Super realistic. Very easy. I did all this in just a few hours. Probably start to finish five hours of work. And that's including dry times to get this piece down. And you're talking every piece of terrain you add to the queue is only added a few more minutes. That's why it's very efficient to assembly line. Now we're going to go back into those big, broad sloping surfaces. Same deal. Let's apply the orange brown there. Let's get those highlights to pop out and there it is it's a good piece like i said you always want to take these techniques i'm showing you guys and to apply them to as many models at once as possible that's the marriage of quantity and quality here next little painting here it is looking fresh don't forget to check out all my other videos check out the twitch live stream every week if you guys want to see the magic happen please check out my patreon page
If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.